Do you want your business to be around in you know, more than just a couple of years time? Of course you do, we all do. That's why we're in business, because we're trying to build something that gives us long-term wealth generation, something that we could be sitting on the beach drinking cocktails while our business is making us more money. The actions you take right now, the team you build right now is what is the defining factor of that, because it's the team that's gonna replace you and allow you to actually scale your business. That's why I made this series called Why High-Performing Teams Will Future-Proof Your Business. And in today's video, we are talking about base compensation. This is where it all starts. Before you throw incentives or bonuses or anything fluffy and fancy, we've got to get the base compensation right. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on compensation, and I want to start with the building phase. Now we're actually going to build a compensation package for our employees. Okay, so I want to talk about the base pay, how does that work, and then there's a series of videos after that about bonuses, incentives, profit share, equity, all those weird and wonderful things. Okay, where are we? we rewind a step, golden ratio, we're trying to optimize our finances, we've measured, we've analyzed, we're now trying to say how do we build the most robust business we can around, especially around labor, because it's such a big part of our businesses, so we're really focusing in on labor and going even deeper than that, talking about building compensation packages. So let's start. Base pay. So when we decide to build a compensation package for anyone, whether it's a, a contractor or an employee, we've got to start with the base pay. The base pay is kind of what your annual salary is or your hourly rate is or whatever the, the foundation of it is. We've got to think about this because there's a number of options available. We've got to navigate all these different constraints and we've got to get that right. And then we can build on top of that in terms of bonuses and incentives and all those things. Okay. So what are our different options that we have when it comes down to base pay? There are fundamentally two options. There's 1099 or there's W2, okay? I've got a video on 1099 versus W2 centered around control. Who is controlling the work that is being done? If we are, we're gonna tend towards W2. If they are, we're gonna tend towards 1099, okay? Don't be afraid of 1099s, please go watch my video. W2s are really robust. It's very hard to build a business that is gonna survive and gonna be good long-term on, on 1099. We've gotta to go to, towards uh, W2. So that's our big options here. And how do we kind of distinguish that? We can look at time is a big factor. So if someone is more short-term, kind of project-oriented, we'll tend towards 1099. If someone is longer-term, ongoing, we'll tend towards uh, W2. Really trying to look at the outcome that we're trying to achieve with employing this person. The second option we have is now we've identified, for instance, let's just say it's a W2 employee who's coming on to be a marketing manager in our business. We now have our budget. This is the golden ratio itself, okay? Now, I have a video on the golden ratio, so this is a great time after this video to go and watch that or watch the perfect p &L video, okay? I'm just gonna say the perfect p &L. PP, that's fine. So the perfect p and the golden ratio, that gives us a very, very clear guideline around how we should be paying from a business perspective, not the individual, from a business perspective, what amount of money we should be allocating from a budget perspective for operations, for sales, for marketing, for success, for service, the different functional areas of building a team. That then drives the budget. The budget then says, oh, I have, let's say 8% to spend on operations or 3% on marketing or 10% on sales or 24% on fulfillment. I have these budgets. Now, how do I go and identify the key roles and then factor in what is my budget for the, from a base pay for this individual that I'm looking at. It's so important that we have a very, very, very clear picture of what, do we, what can we afford? What is our budget so that we don't put unnecessary pressure on the business? There is no point employing a rock star and then not being able to run a business in three months time because you haven't factored in profitability. Okay, we then need to think about, now we know, okay, my budget is $5,000 a month for my marketing manager, that's my budget, $60,000 a year. I know I want them to be W2 because that's the road I'm going, I want them full-time, I want to control them. All making sense, okay, I'm just using this example. And I don't even think about, do I need to be competitive? Do I need to create some kind of uh, structure that is, is uh, alluring? It's going to allow people to say like, hey, well, maybe it's better to go here to work for Clever Profits than it is to work for someone else. Competitiveness is mainly centered around benefits, okay? What kind of benefits do you offer? Okay, as well as just kind of your policy. So what are the policies that you have in your business? Like leave, uh, vacation, um, holiday policies, time, where do you work? Are you remote? Are you not remote? Do you have to come into the office? Do you have to travel very far? What are the requirements that you're trying to, you know, the, the external policies that you're putting on to your people? We've got to think about that as we're building this 
this compensation structure because that could deter people or could attract some certain people. Like we've just employed someone here at Clever Profits in our tax department. They only wanted to be remote. And guess what? We only wanted to employ remote. So there was a great, competitively, we were way more superior than some of the other people they were talking to because our, we aligned on that need that they wanted and what we wanted. Then this is pretty much so like the biggest discussion point by a country mile is performance. Performance is centered around, are we going to give a bonus? Okay. Are we going to give an incentive? Are we going to have a profit share agreement? Or are we potentially even down the line going to have some kind of equity deal for this, this person? This is the one that trips up most people. And if I could say, if I consult, by and large, when I consult with our clients, I spend, if we're ever talking about a compensation package with people, we've done so much work around the golden ratio, our clients know exactly how much money they can afford. They know what kind of the right bands are to go and employ a marketing manager. They understand the distinctions between them. They have their benefits and policies in place because we've built those for them already. It is so centered around what kind of performance incentives and performance package can I put together to enhance the performance of this employee? I, we want to create a package that not only protects ourselves as business owners, but gives our employees an opportunity to do their best job they can. We want to give them a platform to work as hard as they can possibly work and be rewarded for that. That's the most healthy environment that we can build. This is centered around bonuses, incentives, profit, or equity. I have a separate video for all four of these because they are very nuanced. They're very detailed. For instance, a bonus is very backwards looking. It's after you have done this, we will maybe give you a bonus. An incentive is forward looking. It's saying, if you achieve this, we will give you this. Incentives are great to saying, hey, as a salesperson, you go and make that sale, we'll give you a 10%. There's an incentive for you to go make that sale because you will know you will get a 10% commission. A profit share is very different. A profit is the overall profitability of either a product or your business saying, hey, you could, you could get the profits of this whole thing, not just this little outcome that you have in terms of how many sales you made from the entire business or the entire product that we're selling, you can enjoy some of the profits. It's a really robust performance mechanism. And if you're really trying to attract someone long term and you think they have amazing leadership skills, we could even go equity and say, not only are we going to give you a profit, a profit share short term, we can incentivize you for the lifetime value of this company through equity. So every time this company do, does well, you do well. That's where you want to be at. This is, this is the, golden, the golden piece as everyone wants to be on equity. When you buy shares on the stock market, you're essentially buying equity. You're not incentivized, you don't have any bonuses, you don't have any profit share, but you, you get to enjoy in the growth of that business, the, the asset growth of that business. Those are the different mechanisms you use. And I can't go into too much detail here. There is an individual video because you've got to be very, very careful about which one to use. You can use some in combination with each other. You can combine them together. They relate differently to the base pay that you have. It's very important that you understand that in, a, in clear, 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 clear details. What is the best performance mechanism we want to use for our employees? Then we go down to implementation. Now we've decided, okay, we've watched the videos. We're very clear. W2 marketing manager, $5,000 a month. We're in our budget. Um, we have our certain policy. They work remote, whatever it is. Great. We have an incentive structure that if we generate more than 500 leads a month, he gets a $1,000 bonus. If he gets to 550 leads a month, you get $1,500 bonus. Whatever the incentive structure or bonus structure is, we've identified. Now we need to implement now we actually need to make this thing happen. And this is very contractual, okay? So now we're going to have a contract that we are going to sign with our uh, employees, so this person that we want here, okay? Contracts are something we've learned lately, hugely valuable, is you have to talk to an attorney, number one, if you're gonna do this more often, they're not, okay? So if you're playing one or two people, you can maybe get away with it, but if you're trying to build a business, Talk to your attorney, talk to your HR professional. But what we've learned, something that's really robust is to do offer letters with an employee handbook. So a one-page offer letter saying, hey, you're employing you as a marketing manager, your base salary is $60,000 a year, we pay it out bi-weekly, and uh, you have an incentive structure of X, X amount of leads, whatever it is. All other provisions are withheld in our employee handbook. And then you have a handbook that has got all the details of what is your leave structures, your vacation structures, what is you know, days off, uh, you know, your benefit policies, working policies, all those different pieces that you have are embodied in your employee handbook, which means you can change the handbook without having to change the fundamental contract you have with the employee. It's really, really helpful. Also, if you have any of these, okay, 
put them in a separate agreement. So you have your offer letter, which is base, and if you have an incentive structure, put it in a separate agreement, say this, and you also adhere to this incentive structure. Why? You can sever them up, you can do them separately. If one doesn't work, you can take it away without destroying the fundamental relationship you have with this employee. That helps you when it comes to reviews, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. The other thing is SOPs and systems, okay? Okay, do you have them in place? If we are going W2, do you have a payroll set up? Do you have someone who's going to onboard this person? Do you know how to set up their benefits? Do you know how to factor in their withholding taxes and paying your employee taxes? Do we have all the standard operating procedures and the systems in the back end to actually deal with this? Do we have the mechanism to pay these people, to measure these performance structures? Okay, the worst thing I see is someone says, oh, I wanna have this performance structure that every second sale they get another bonus and you're going, do you realize that logistically it's an absolute nightmare to manage that? And you probably have to go and employ more resources just to have someone to manage the system you're trying to put in and you're now throwing your budget out of the water. Very important to think about what you're implementing. Our policy is keep it simple, okay? There's the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. We follow that big time. Just keep it simple. Don't, you don't have to create complex, complex things. Keep it nice and simple, easy to measure, easy to find so we can get the outcome we want. And then lastly, reviews. If you are on a, w, a 1099, we advocate to everyone a 90-day review process. So every 90 days, you have a review, check your outcomes, what's happened, do we need to adjust this contract, do we need to go back and look at all these points, i.e., are we still on the right option? Are we still within budget? Are we still being competitive? Are we still incentivizing our performance? Are we still implementing the right thing? If we need to review that, we can change it and implement something new. If you're on a W-2, that's more focused around performance reviews. And every six months, every 12 months, you have a performance review. Here, we wanna be very clear on our expectations. We're gonna be honest with our employees. We gotta know our numbers. We gotta know all these different points to make our employees feel comfortable, feel assured, feel like, hey, there's a leader here that I can back and go and do this job correctly. That is how we factor in base pay. So we start our options, make sure we get our budget right. Are we competitive? What do we need to do? Performance, massive focus. Please go and watch those videos. The rest of the videos are all based on performance. This is where the meat of employing highly qualified and incredible staff members and team members is really centered around how you incentivize high performance. Are we implementing correctly? Are we reviewing correctly? And you should then have the base point of a really robust employment system that has good base pay and is attracting highly qualified people and have really competitive compensation packages. So I hope that's helpful. Please go and watch some of these bonus uh, incentive profit share and equity videos that are gonna be super helpful for you thinking about when to implement these and how they fundamentally work. What are the nuances of them? Hope that's helpful. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching this video. There's two more here that I think you'll get maximum value from. And please smash the like button and hit subscribe. My business partner and I are dropping content every single week. And also, we would love to have you in our Facebook community. So follow the link below and we'll see you there.